Welcome to a screencast on polyprotic acids. The objective of this screencast is to extend previously introduced equilibrium concepts to acids that donate more than one proton. In other words, to be able to write dissociation equations, calculate pH, and calculate concentrations of the various species in solution. Now, first of all, what are polyprotic acids? Well, H2SO4, H2CO3, H3PO4 are all examples of what are called polyprotic acids. Poly means many and protic means donates a proton. So H2SO4 has two hydrogen ions or two protons it can donate. Same with H2CO3 and H3PO4 actually has three hydrogens that can be donated. Here is a ball and stick representation of H2SO4 with one, two hydrogens that could dissociate. Here's H2CO3, sort of Lewis dot structure, or just general uh, line structure being shown, two hydrogens that can dissociate. And here is a three-dimensional space filling model of H3PO4 with one, two, three hydrogens that can dissociate. Now, it's probably obvious that in a polyprotic acid, not all hydrogen ions dissociate equally easily. So for example, carbonic acid has a first dissociation constant called K sub A1 of 4.3 times 10 to the minus seventh, and then a second dissociation constant of 5.6 times 10 to the minus 11th. Uh, the second dissociation constant is quite a bit smaller than the first, and that's because the second dissociation happens quite a bit less than the first. And if you look at these other polyprotic acids, they're always going to have the second, or if there's a third, dissociation constant smaller than the second or first dissociation constants. Okay, now how do we deal with this in terms of calculating things? And let's do an example of calculating the pH of 0.1 molar H2SO4. Now first thing is, here is the overall equation for what happens. H2SO4 combines with water to make hydronium ion and the sulfate ion. And since H2SO4 is a diprotic acid, it has two hydrogens that can dissociate, it can make two hydronium ions along with the sulfate. But it's actually a little more complicated than that because this dissociation, we could actually think of it as happening in two steps. First of all, H2SO4 loses one hydrogen ion to make hydronium, and then the HSO4 minus ion, and then this HSO4 minus ion can lose another hydrogen. So this hydrogen can combine with water to make H3O plus and the sulfate ion. Note that these bottom two equations add up to the top one overall. Also notice H2SO4, the first dissociation is complete 100% and we have a one-way arrow to the right whereas the second dissociation is only partial and we have an equilibrium double arrow. And in fact here are the values for Ka1. It's so large it's pretty much hard uh, impossible to measure. We just say very large 100% dissociation and then K sub A2 is 1.2 times 10 to the minus second. Okay so those are the equations. Now how do we do our calculations? And in a diprotic, or for that matter, triprotic acid uh, calculation, we just look at step-by-step, -step, first dissociation followed by second dissociation. And so the first dissociation is H2SO4 makes H3O plus plus HSO4 minus. Our quote-unquote initial concentration is the nominal 0.1 molar H2SO4 and we'll initially pretend it hasn't dissociated. And now it'll change by some amount, normal equilibrium plus X and minus X stuff. And so at the end of the first dissociation, we have the following, 0.1 minus X for the equilibrium concentration of H2SO4, X for H3O plus, and X for HSO4 minus. Now, if this was not a strong acid, we'd use the K sub A value to calculate the value of X. But H2SO4 is a strong acid, certainly in its first dissociation. And so what that means is, even though we can write an equilibrium constant expression, 
because that's a huge number. That means that the products are big by comparison to the reactant, which is small, essentially zero. And so we get 0.1 molar H3O plus, 0.1 molar HSO4 minus, and no H2SO4. It 100% dissociates, kind of usual stuff. And again, if this was a weak first dissociation, we'd actually have to calculate the value of x using the equilibrium constant expression and whatever the case of a1 value was. Okay, so now we know the results of the first dissociation and we move on to the second dissociation, which is that the HSO4 made from the first dissociation combines with water to make H3O plus and SO4 two minus. That one is a double arrow equilibrium. And now our initial for step two or dissociation two are actually the concentrations that we determined from the first dissociation. So HSO4 is 0.1 molar. H3O plus is 0.1 molar because that's how much we got from the first dissociation. And again, usual stuff, we'll pretend the second dissociation hasn't happened. So our quote unquote initial is the start of the second uh, dissociation is the same as the end of the first. And then there will be a change where the HSO4 minus will go down a little, the H3O plus and the SO4 two minus will go up a little. And at the second equilibrium end, we have 0.1 molar minus X for HSO4 minus, 0.1 plus X, so notice it didn't start at zero for the H3O plus concentration and X for the SO4 two minus. Uh, notice, of course, our X here is different than the X for the first dissociation. We're just using X as the generic variable. There's the setup for case of A2. And there's the X uh, expression and what it equals. So usual equilibrium stuff, just sort of be careful of your setups. And now we have 0.1 plus X times X over 0.1 minus x is equal to the case of a2 of 1.2 times 10 to the minus second. So that's the equation we want to solve. Do the usual stuff to solve and you get x equals 0 0.0098 molar. And now note this time x is not the hydronium ion concentration. It's the little bit more dissociation we get from the second step which is added to the hydronium ion concentration from the first step. So that turns out to be 0.1 plus 0 0.0098, which rounds off to 0.11. So we get a little bit more hydronium concentration from the second dissociation. And then take the negative log of that to get the pH, and we get 0.96, a little bit lower than what we'd expect for a monoprotic strong acid of the uh, same concentration. We get, get a little bit lower pH, a little bit more hydronium ion concentration from the second dissociation. Now this process works for other um, polyprotic acids. Very often the first dissociation won't be strong and so you'll have to do a case of a calculation for the first one. Uh, and then the second dissociation sometimes is small enough that it doesn't actually change things. So um, that's another thing to pay attention to when you work some examples. So that is it for the introduction to polyprotic acids.